This is it, the moment that we've all been waiting for, the moment of truth. Finally new Blink-182 music and their first new music with Matt Skiba that's supposed to be different and a little bit out there. What did we get? What's up everyone, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John and it's time for a review of the new song by Blink-182, a pop punk band that have been legends in the scene for quite some time now. It's produced by Tim Pagnotta of Sugar Cult fame. I didn't expect that considering I've seen Pharrell Williams, The Chainsmokers, and John Feldman as the primary producer names that have been floating around. This new track is called Blame It On My Youth. The song kind of sees an exuberance and expression of Mark Hoppus and Matt Skiba talking about their roots, where they came from, how they were raised, and why that they are the way that they are now, I suppose, because of their youth, and that's what you can blame it on. Let me just start by saying that Blink-182 have one of the most hard-to-please fan bases out of any band that I have ever seen in my entire life. It really doesn't matter what they're doing, they're probably doing something wrong or else they're pining away for another era of the band that they maybe even formally hated. I see now that fans after the release of Blink-182's new single, Blame It On My Youth, are calling for the return of Tom DeLonge in the Neighborhoods era. And in 2011, even myself included I suppose at the time, most people were not fans. Now, of course, we've arrived at this new single, and people are really upset at it. So many people claiming that it sucks, the production is flat. Are these claims true? Do they have some sort of validation to them? Well, I would say so, at least to some degree, but I don't think it's as egregious as some people are making out to be. Here's the thing with Blame It On My Youth. The guitars are kind of understated in the mix, so that right away signals to some people the death of Blink-182, the fact that the guitars are not turned up to 11 and they're not rocking the hell out. Well, I have to say to you, what did you really expect considering they've been teasing that their new material was at least going to be some sort of deviation for a while now? I was expecting something along the lines of from the California Deluxe album, Bottom of the Ocean, or even from California, the title track. They got a little bit more experimental, they switched up the drumming, and they also switched up the presence of the guitars and what they did in the mix. And here on Blame It On My Youth, I totally feel that you can still hear the guitars. They have a searing burn to them in the background. It's like a slow burn that kind of eats away at you. And I like the fact that they're there. There's a little bit of distortion, a little bit of reverb in the mix on those. And I think they come across pretty good, especially during the verses. Now where things do fall a bit flat and where I start to understand the complaints is the chorus. This thing is completely underwritten. The chorus actually lyrically sucks. And there's also just no explosion there. There needed to be a dynamite moment where the fireworks go off in the background. And instead, it's like Sucker by the Jonas Brothers that everyone was complaining, well, this needed to go off even more. Well, for Blink-182, I think that's up to the nth degree. The expectation is there that we want to dance along, we want to move around. And this song doesn't really get you moving in that sense. I feel like it's kind of a tease because it's building up. I like the verses a lot on this track, actually. But once you get to the chorus, things just kind of fade out. For as much as the band are probably going to want us to see this as somewhat of a separation from their older material and back catalog, I really don't feel that we're in that unfamiliar of territory here. I mean, Blink have done more low-key songs before, probably not a lot of the singles, but I think a lot of people fail to remember that. We're not in unfamiliar territory because Mark Hoppus is singing about his childhood again, and oh my goodness, we've gotten that before. And here, it's just to a more uninteresting degree, I suppose. It's not bad. I don't hate Mark's verse, and I also don't hate the second verse from Matt at all. In fact, those are probably my two favorite parts of the song. Where things get weak and thrown off for me are unfortunately some of Matt Skiba's sections, like the chorus. I feel that, like I said, it's kind of understated, underwritten, and then the layered vocals, it makes it sound like five seconds of summer, and that's not a compliment for Blink-182. The bridge of the track also kind of gets deviated a little bit from where I guess the song was attempting to go. Matt is singing about Ritalin and I don't give a shit and I don't need an excuse, everything like that. It feels like the most lazily written part of the song and that's saying something considering how low-key and 
very few words the chorus actually has. Even with all of these elements stacking up, you might think that the odds are against me actually liking Blame It On My Youth, and I want to say that they're not totally against it. In fact, I played through this song ten times just to make sure that my opinion was solidified on it. And I do not hate it. I genuinely do not even dislike it. I'm bothered by certain sections. I'm finding them worrisome, and I'm not exactly sure what we're going to get on Blink's album that's coming up, their eighth full-length record. But still, something about this song, it's got a little bit of a catchiness to it. I like the fact that it kind of simmers. I don't know. There's kind of a chill summer energy to it. And I could see myself being attracted to it in some senses in the future. Maybe I'll come back to it more than I think I will. But it's also not that great of a song, and I have to acknowledge that. For a lead single, I think they definitely could have done better. I'm a little bit impressed with the production work. I do like that the drums are mixed high. It's a Blink-182 track and you've got Travis Barker, so you have to have some emphasis there. And I do think the drumming sounds good here. The guitars and the verses sound good, but the chorus and probably the bridge of the track are what throw it off and derail it a bit for me. Overall, I'm going to give this a strong three. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opinions on this one, strong and uh, probably even stronger. So sound off down below, get a discussion going, please drop a like on this review while you're here, and subscribe for the love of music. Tap right here to see me rank all of Blink-182's studio albums up to this point. Tap here for another recent song review, or connect with me on social media including my Patreon page and the links in the description down below. Other than that, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you soon for more right here on Beyond AR TV.